Hello, so this year I did something a little different with my reading. I actually started to record or write down when I DNF'd a book. Of course, I, I DNF'd in the past, but when I would, I, I, I wouldn't mark it down. I was only writing down the books that I finished. Um, but this year I had sort of a separate list of all the books I DNF'd, and it gave me great freedom, I think, to DNF books even very well into them. Um, and I, I wrote a couple, a sentence or two about why I stopped reading them, and I, I thought I'd go through some of them. Um, this isn't all of the books because sometimes I just read of the first few pages and I'd realize the book just wasn't for me and I don't think that's an interesting reason to talk about so I'm, I'm going to talk about the other ones that I DNF'd. These are in the order that I read them in throughout 2021. Um, the first is Soviet Sovietistan. Uh, this is not bad at all. I just found myself not picking it up that much. I think I've realized that travel writing just isn't for me. I really struggle to picture things like real places in the world um, just purely from writing and so I end up googling a lot of the places and images and things and I find that kind of exhausting. The next is Mick Mindfulness. Um, this book uh, it just felt like it was sort of preaching to the choir there's only so much capitalism equals bad that you can read you know. The Voyeur's Motel. Um, I just couldn't shake this feeling that the writer was full of shit. He often talked about how successful his career was and um, I also didn't ever feel like reading more than a couple very short chapters at a time. Like it just kind of all rang a bit false. The Name of the Rose. Gah, just uh, so much Latin. Um, there was a sentence, one one sentence that was 212 words long. And yes, I counted. Um, you know, at the time I was studying chemistry and I said in my sentences, I'm stretching my brain with chemistry right now. If I stretch it with this shit, I'm going to break. <laughs> Next is Into the Night. Uh, sadly, just too slow. It reads like a filled-in screenplay, but not in a good way. Uh, I don't care about the murdered movie star. I wished it was about the homeless man at the beginning. Um, it had good atmosphere in Melbourne, though. I picked this up wanting to read a book set in Melbourne, which is where I live. But yeah, didn't finish it. Next was Boy Swallows Universe. Only read the first chapter. This just felt like work to me. The writing was thick, not overly challenging I just had to concentrate a bit not what I'm in the mood for I'm lazy <laughs> next is Vera which I picked up because apparently it was the original inspiration for Rebecca um, and I I just I didn't want to read about the asshole male character I, I get that that's the whole point of the book but I just wasn't in the mood next is quicksand and I got so close to the ending but I just didn't want to read anymore you know it wasn't super bad or anything I just ran out of steam and I found the writing kind of stiff and unmoving which admittedly could have been down to the translation Detransition Baby. Uh, I feel like I let this book down in a way, you know, I read the first 35 pages or so and then I picked up Stacey Abrams' book and I completely got hooked on that. Um, and I, I just didn't feel compelled to return to this. It, it felt like one of those millennial fiction books that I'm supposedly meant to relate to but I never do and, you know, the writing just didn't compel me. Um, I, I, I think it was too character focused in a way that isn't what I like in writing and I I felt like I felt like I would have been reading this out of obligation. Um, next is Cultish, The Language of Fanaticism. Um, I got about a third into this. I, I, I don't know, it just didn't seem to offer me anything that I didn't already know. It didn't seem to be going into the cult particularly deeply. Um, it just, and it also, it kept telling me about what it was going to speak about later in the book instead of just like speaking about what it was speaking about at that moment. It I felt like it, it dipped into internet speak far too much for my liking. I mentioned in another video of mine that it, it felt like it read like Twitter and I just don't like that style of writing. And she brought up Donald Trump at every chance. I mean, that's that's fair. He uses this sort, of, this sort of language, but like it was just too often. I kept waiting for it to pick up or go a bit deeper or whatever and it just, it never did. Next is Rules of Civility, and I don't know if this was me or the book. I got about a quarter of the way into it, and I just didn't really want to continue. The writing is good, like, I, it's not bad, but I just felt like it just wasn't me, and I, I don't necessarily, it wasn't for me, and I don't necessarily know how to articulate why. Sometimes there is just this style of writing that 
I feel disconnected from and it's not necessarily because of glaring faults I can't necessarily put my finger on it it's just it feels hollow for me somehow next is the disordered cosmos and I actually probably of any on this list I feel the most strongly about this because this book is just not well explained science and I just it really annoys me because I, I read a lot of reviews that were glowing reviews four or five stars you know but all of them or, or most of them were talking about how oh my god the first few chapters totally didn't understand it I'm just too dumb you know like I'm not into science I don't I didn't understand it no I do know a little bit about science to be fair I'm not a physicist but I do know a bit about science and I know a bit about science communication and this was bad science communication I didn't get I know that she talks more about her life and you know intersectionality later on in the book well I didn't get to that part because in my opinion you are doing science and science communication a disservice when you're making people believe that they're too dumb to understand it it is your fault for not being able to explain it very well I'm actually going to steal a paragraph from another review that I read on Goodreads by by a person just called H um because I think they articulate what I'm trying to say really well. So uh, this is a quote from them. It wasn't science communication. From the point of view of a writer and a teacher, it lacked the basic rules for talking about difficult topics, break down complex ideas into simple components, define new terminology, introduce one new element of information at a time, and build simpler concepts on top of each other to lead to an understanding of more complex ideas. Literally none of these techniques were followed, and the result was incomprehensible. I see other reviews viewers excusing this by blaming themselves for being bad at STEM and that makes me sad because that's not how science communication should make anyone feel. I was annoyed by the constant US centrism, a quality I have found most prevalent in people who spend a lot of time on Twitter, which seems to suck users into an Americana soapbox. Dr. Pesco Weinstein is trapped in such a soapbox and the prose frequently collapses into flashy tweetable zingers and repetitive furious rants. And yet that just articulates my two biggest grievances with this book, that it was bad science communication and that it, yeah, it just read like Twitter, which I've talked about, that that's just something that is not to my taste at all. Okay, the next book is the book everyone was sort of reading this year, which is Dune. Um, oh my God. So I, I read so much of this thing. Um, I got through books one and two, and by that I mean... Um, part one and two of the first book because the first book is character ca is subdivided into books it's a bit confusing but by the end of book two I was just exhausted it's sad really because the story is fantastic and I absolutely loved the politics and the geography of June but it was just so slow you know five or six chapters would pass and I'd be bored stiffless at least in the second section I think the first section was absolutely fantastic it was my favorite section of the book the slow tension of them arriving at June and them knowing that something bad is going to happen and what is it going to be and and who is going to harm them it, it was really really great but I found after they sort of end up in the desert I just found it really slow it ultimately just felt laborious so this book is interesting because I enjoyed the first section so so much that like the fact that I didn't actually end up finishing the book is really surprising to me because I was so into it at first but um yeah it just it really sort of um nosedived in the second section next is present shock when everything happens now there were some good points in this book, but it was all unfocused and hard to follow. Each sentence didn't seem to build from the last. It seemed to jump from one perspective to another without, you know, coming to any sort of conclusion. I DNF'd um, a bit after chapter one. And, you know, I do, I do like... I do take away the main point that the 20th century was looking forward and the economics and politics and culture was all informed by that and that once 2000 hit we kind of didn't know what to do after that and now we're sort of stuck looking at the present almost um almost chronically you know but I felt like once I sort of got that point there wasn't much more to actually glean from this book. And then the last DNF of the year was SPQR, um, which I had actually tried to read years before. Um, I think like 2018 or so, I picked this up and I read the first couple chapters. And I love the introduction to this book. It is such a strong, powerful introduction. It really convinces me, like, yes, I want to learn about Roman history. It's so good. And then I hit the actual bulk of the book, like the first couple chapters, I just 
it, my interest just comes screeching to a halt when I'm actually confronted with the history of like all these names and, and the founding of Rome. And I just, I, I end up kind of thinking, okay, but do I actually need to know Roman history? I just, I don't think I care enough about Rome. The only enjoyment I get is from the moments of, oh my gosh, that's like just like today, you know, but I don't think that that's enough to sustain me through a book this long. And um, yeah, I think maybe I would rather learn about Roman history via like documentaries where they can show images and art and things to represent this. Um, I mean, she does have some, some art pictures in here, but I don't know, just was it interested. Um, yeah, so they, they are some of my DNFs. Um, thank you for watching.